Look at that one. Definitely need to replace this. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hunky Vape. I'm your host, DJ Alex, and today we're doing something a little different. I've got a bunch of these lights, and as you can clearly see, they stopped working. Every single one of these things. The longest one I've had running for maybe about a year. One of these ones quit after only two months. And, you know, you just go out and buy another one, throw these ones away. Well, what if I told you you could fix this thing for less than 50 cents? So, you could fix them all for less than a couple bucks in a couple minutes of your time. So, that's what we're doing today. Let's flip it, take a look and find out what's actually causing this problem and show you how easy it is to get this thing fixed. Well, here's our problem. Obviously, the first thing we got to do is unplug this thing. Warning, warning, warning. Tools needed for this job. Well, obviously, you're going to need a screwdriver, whether it be power or manual, to take apart the light. You're going to need yourself a knife to cut the tape that's holding the board into the thing. You may need a set of tweezers. I prefer these ceramic tweezers, but any tweezers will work. And you could even use your fingers to help remove the old capacitor. You're going to need a pair of wire cutters and a decent soldering iron. It doesn't have to be this really fancy one, but you will need a soldering iron. And you can choose to either use a solder sucker or Lately, I've been preferring to use just some solder wick to remove the old solder and clean up the contacts before we put our new parts in. And speaking of what's new parts, well, you're obviously going to need brand new high quality replacement capacitors. We simply have a single bulging capacitor, which is preventing this from starting up. As you can see, it's 220 microfarad, 35 volts. Now you can go up to a 50 volt capacitor, but anything bigger than that, it's not going to fit within the footprint of that board. We'll take the cover off. Here you have the tape that's clearly holding this on here and clearly wrapped around this thing, but there's no end of the tape in sight. It's underneath the silicone that's holding this plastic piece to the case. So in this instance, you're gonna to need to use an X-Acto knife to cut this tape, but you wanna cut this tape in a way that we're gonna put some new tape on here and you don't have to remove this component. So you just simply cut around this capacitor cut around this transformer, run along the edge, and now you can peel back the tape. to remove the circuit board. It also helps to have a little vise to stabilize this on your bench. You could just tape this to your bench if you don't have one of these vices but this secures it so you have a nice solid work surface. I like to use the alligator clips from my test panel to just hold the board in place. Now, very easy for us to remove this capacitor. If you don't happen to have soldering wicks present, throw some fresh solder on there. And what we're going to do is we're going to heat up the one contact and we're going to rock this, the capacitor back and forth on the other side. Until she falls out. And then you can use your soldering wick or your solder sucker to clean out these holes.
Make sure when you put your capacitor and you match up the polarity, each capacitor is clearly marked with a negative and the board is clearly marked positive and negative. Drop the positive lead lead down, which is longer. Then drop the negative lead down. And you can spread your leads out to hold it in place. Heat the component up, then add your solder. Clip off the leads. You can use a little alcohol to clean off the flux if you're concerned about any buildup on there. You can even use some lens cleaning wipes, which is essentially just alcohol. And just give that a little warp down. And you'll see, it'll clean all this flux off of there. As good as new. Or you could use some isopropyl alcohol with a Q-tip, whatever you want to do. Peel back your tape. Get your board back into the shell that it came from. And just like that, she's back in place. But because this is just a single piece of tape and you see that it's cut here, we can order ourselves this exact same tape. It's just heat resistant tape used for electronics, used for packaging. I'll grab a piece of that. Hey folks, future self here. Just got up. I got the package yesterday. I forgot to tell you guys, we're gonna need some new tape to secure the board back into the housing here. I'll drop links to all these products down in the description below. But what you need to find is some heat resistant tape. My wife orders this stuff whenever she's doing heat pressing on shirts and stuff like that. And for her tumblers and her cups, but this tape is good to 500 degrees. And I know it gets hot in these things, but it's certainly not gonna be 500 degrees. So I just pull off a little piece like that. And as you can see, the stuff in here, despite, you know, us cutting around here and trying to secure it down, isn't gonna stay in place by itself. So you get yourself some of this tape, put it down on the one side, get it to attach, get it to go underneath this uh, antenna for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection. Make sure that you mat it down so it sticks nicely to the other tape. And there we have it, just like that. This is now in here, secured. It's not gonna go anywhere. All we gotta do is clean off this glass because it's got some smoky buildup in there from the old components. Some nice sprayway glass cleaner foaming. That'll break down all that stuff right there. Give it a nice wipe down. A little polish. And just like brand new. Awesome. All done. Not a repeat for the other five lights. And we'll wrap this thing up. I'm gonna show you that it actually is bad and the cause of that light not firing. If you don't happen to have one of these fancy ESR meters, I have it for my computer work. You could just use a capacitor reader. Some of the multimeters have that capacity built into it. But this is definitely a failed capacitor. You can see the top of that is bulged out. And when we do a test on it, you'll find out that that is 10 ohms of resistance. Now, for a 2200U microfarad capacitor at 35 volts, it should be 
basically a 0.12, 0.13 at the most. And this thing is reading 10 ohms. Definitely a failed part. Rubbish. Meanwhile, a brand new one. Point oh eight. High quality components matter. And just like that, I've got more lights than I know what to do with. Well worth the 50 cents a piece it cost for each of these lights to get fixed. All because of a single bag capacitor. Anyway, I'm going to be doing more of these repair videos because honestly, I don't pitch anything if I don't have to. And I might as well just stick it in front of a camera because maybe you got one of these lights and maybe you need to fix it. Or maybe one of the other things I would do on a, seems like a weekly basis. Might as well throw it in front of a camera and try and help some of you guys out. So if this review video helped you out, it's not review video or repair video. This repair video helped you out. Hit the like button below. Leave a comment. Let me know. Did I entertain you? Did I help you fix your stuff? Or maybe you got a question. Feel free to ask your question below and I'll do my best to answer. And thank God this repair video is all wrapped up. Kind of like I am now. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'm going to go and try and untangle myself. I wish there was a better way to show you that these all work. Anyway, have a great day.